In this video here, we're going to see how we can train a YOLO 11 model on a custom data set. We have this home update data set with different classes in an indoor environment. We're going to go through in a Google Colab notebook how to run each step. First of all here, let's just jump straight into the Autolytics documentation. If you go inside the data set tab, you can find all the data sets available. If you just specify the data YAML file, it's automatically going to download the data set to your environment, your computer or wherever you're running it. You can also use your own custom data set depending on how you label it and so on. We have videos covering how you can label your own data set, convert it into the correct Autolytics and YOLO format and then train the video or train the models in the exact same way as we're doing here. Directly in documentation, you can open it up in a Google Colab notebook. I'm just going to do that here in the background. We have the dataset structure. We have over 2000 annotated images with objects such as sofas, chairs, tables, lamps, and more. So it's containing 12 objects in total. This is a very good representation of a custom data set like two three thousand images this is probably like the average size of a data set if you're just training it up for some smaller projects and even larger projects as well if you want to have very good performance this is also the range of images that you at least need to have if you want to have the best of the best models we can see the object classes so bed sofa chair table lamp tv laptop wardrobe a window door pot of plant photo frame so this is just different indoor environment classes that we're going to take a look at. So indoor update detection, scene layout, passing, augmented reality application, education and research, home inventory and asset tracking as well. This is the data YAML file that we're going to use as well. If you just specify it, it's automatically going to download it. We also have the download link here. Here we just have some previews of the images that we have inside the data sets. So we have some table, couches, sofas, windows and all that but let's go into the fun part directly if you want to find all the notebooks that we have available with autolytics we have this notebook repository to so autolytics notebooks then you can find all the notebooks available in here how to train autolytics yolo on home objects data set every single thing is described here in details step by step with individual code blocks that you need to run how to set it up what each of them are doing it's way more about understanding how we can use data, how it works under the hood and so on, because with Autolytics, we can just run a few commands and we're going to train our models. So right now I'm just going to connect it to an 800. If you go inside our runtime, change runtime type, you can choose which GPU you want to use. They have free GPU resources inside Google Colab here. So we can see I'm hitting some limits here. It's just going to change the runtime T4 exactly what you guys can use as well. We should connect to it an environment up here at the top. Connecting. And there we go. We are now connected to our free GPU on Google Colab. First of all, the only thing that we need to do is just pip install Autolytics. All the other things, Torch, CUDA, all of that is already taken care of in here. This is why it's so easy to just go in and run, get something quick up and running with Autolytics. So then we have our dataset YAML file, which is the exact same format as we saw inside the documentation. So we have the path to our train validation and test split. We have the number of classes that we have and the download link. So we don't need to run this block of code. It's not going to do anything down here at the training block. We have train YOLO 11 on the text segment classify post estimation. Here we're just going to do traditional update detection with our detection task. Import YOLO from Autolytics. We can construct a model like this we're just going to use the yolo 11 nano version for now we have nano small medium large and extra large depending on how large model you want nano or small is probably the best model in most cases we can now hit model.train we specify our data yaml file and it's automatically going to download it to our computer or the environment that we are running right now we can train it for three epochs let's maybe just bump it up to 30 epochs we have image size of 640 Let's now hit start train. This is everything that we have to do. So as long as you have your data set in the correct format, just hit train. It will train your model and then you can use it for real world applications and projects. So we're going to create an instance. I think it's still running the installation steps up here. It might take 30 seconds, a minute in here, and then it's going to run the training after. This is the results that we're going to get out 
after a model is done training, it will probably take 15, 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes, depending on the DPU that you have, but we can see it's now downloading the data set. So this might also just take 10, 15 seconds. It's pretty fast at downloading the almost 3000 images. We can run prediction after. So this is just model.predict instead of model.train. Downloading, see it sets up all the model layers, the model architecture, has automatic mix precision. We run some checks here with our train validation set. Plotting labels, it will set up the optimizer and, and all of that. And now we should be good to go. So we can see it's training epoch one out of 30. We can see the number of batches that is passing it passing through here as well. GPU memory. After that's done running an epoch, we will get the evaluation results with our mean error position, precision recall, and our losses as well. But it's now just go grab a coffee. Let's get back here. 20 minutes, around 20 minutes probably, and then it's done training for 30 epochs. We will be able to do some scoring with the model and see some results. So we can see our model is almost done training here. We just need like 20 more seconds. Let's take a look at some of the mean error positions. So here in the start, we start at around 0.4 mean error position, and then it's pretty much just going up per epoch. Let's see if it actually converges. So you see this pretty much just goes up and up and up. We have both have to take a look at the mean error position of 0.50 and also 0.50 to 0.95. We can see our precision recall as well, but it's way better to go in and look at the graphs. So after each epoch, it runs the evaluation. Now we can see it's pretty much done. It just needs a few batches. There we go. It's going to do the evaluation and save it into our runs directory. That's all we need to train a custom YOLO 11 model. We have our runs directory. Detect, train. Everything will be saved in here. Right now it's just running validation. We can see all the validation results for the individual classes. So we can see it's pretty much best at detecting sofas. It's also pretty good at photo frames. Let's see where the model might struggle. So this is the mean of positions. So the model might struggle a bit here for a door. It has pretty low recall as well. The precision is not too high either. Sofa is really good. We have relatively high precision and also recall. We could train the model for longer. We probably need to train it like maybe 100 epochs or something like that. So that will maybe take one and a half, two hours. If you go inside our train, we have our weights. You can download the best weights. Just right click, hit download. Then you can use it for running inference later on. The other thing here that I look at when we use multi-classes is the confusion matrix. We want to have all the values in the diagonal. So here it's a really good representation of seeing where does it act like make mistakes. We have to extrude. And then we have the predictions here. So when we're predicting chairs, we're predicting a lot of chairs which should actually have been a sofa. They might be very similar to each other. So that might be why the model is struggling a bit more with that. Ideally, we want to have all the values in the diagonal. The second thing I'm looking at is the result.png. We can see the model has not fully converged yet. It's still going up slightly, but it is already performing pretty good. We want to make sure that it pretty much just flattens out and converges. Then we can use the best of PT and we have a pretty good model. So this is everything that we need. We can take a look at some uh, validation predictions as well. So here we have the predictions. You can see the labels. This is what it's act like predicting on validation images. So the model has never seen or been trained on these images before. Let's go now, now go down and see how we can run our inference. So we have our trainer saved here. We grab the best weights as I just mentioned. This is how we can run it with a custom model. We just run prediction on this sample image. And this is how you can run prediction. You can run this on your own local environment. Use, usually you will train it here in Google Colab. Then you export the model, download the model and use it in your own custom Python script where you want to run this model. Then we get our prediction, we get our home sample. And this is the predictions that we just ran through here. 100 milliseconds inference. So we have our sofa, we have our table, we have lamps here, photo frames, potted plant, table, and also potted plant on the table. We get all the sections here, looks very nice, it's also high quality image. We can then go in and export it. As I mentioned as well, if you want to run it into an optimized framework, I'll probably export the model first, run some inference, do some testing on the model, then export it into an optimized framework before we actually get it into production. So on next, open Vino. 
if you want to use it on CPU, Intel CPUs, Tens RT, if you have Nvidia hardware available, you can use Core ML for Apple hardware. We have mo pretty much videos for all of these here. Go full into details with the export, how to set up Tens RT, how to convert it into ONNX, then into an Indian file. Check out the videos here on YouTube. We go fully in depth and very detailed videos for that. So if you want to export it, we can just specify the format. So we don't have the safety here, but we can grab this one. There we go. So we have our model. We just hit model.export to own an X. And now it, uh, for some reason, deleted this save there, but we can just go in and grab it, copy the path, drop in the full path here. There we go. And now we'll run the inference and it will also export into own an X format and we will get our own an X model. Starting export with own an X. There we go. So we have our train weights. We have our train, we have our weights, and now we also have our ONX model. This is pretty much everything that we need for the whole computer vision pipeline. We can see it's just a few clicks and a few code blocks that we need to run with Autolytics. This is how we can create a custom data set, grab a data set from Autolytics, train a model, run inference, and export it. All the other things are covered in other videos, also how you can set up your data set and so on. So definitely check those out. Hope you learned a ton. Go in and check it out, Rolls Analytics. And then I hope to see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy training.